problem is that the processes and the techniques and the machines are going away because we've stopped using them. Everybody now is a printer and a compositor because they got a computer and they think they can do it, you know, and, and so all of the old stuff is going away. It's been junk for um, the metals and the machines are broken down and because they're not used very much anymore. So part of the passion as far as I'm concerned is how did this process work? You know, how did they put gears and uh, cams and stuff together to make the machine work so that it could uh, produce type for printing? And uh, I enjoy printing and the aspect of Typecasting allows me to do that because it's getting harder and harder to find type and especially full type sets. And so I'm able to put this older process together to produce the type that I need to print. And uh, I can get interesting things because if I can find an artifact and uh, make it into a map, then I can cast those and use it on the pieces that I produce. So it's um, it's not much more than a hobby and I'm certainly you know at the low end of techniques etc. I mean I get product out but um, it's, um, it's still a very big learning process to try to uh, go through the entire process to get a final printing done and uh, you know it's just different and interesting and I enjoy doing it, so that's what what got me to this point. It seems like it draws from many fields. Yes. I assume you've had to do a lot of exploration of like metallurgy and mm -hmm. other things. How, right. how did you how did you get your start? What what was your passion that got you into actually doing this rather than thinking well, about it? Well, it was having to to do something. You know, if I can't find type to print with, I have to be able to make type. And if I want to make type, then I've got to get machines that or a hundred years old back in operation and if there is not parts you know if I don't have multiple machines there's no parts nobody's making parts so I have to make my own parts you know so it goes on and on and on so you're putting all those steps in place to try to get something to work that you know there's a lot of uh, hobby and professional letterpress printers around the United States but the materials that they're working with are getting harder and harder to find. And it's, you know, so there's, I've circumvented that a bit by making my own type. So I can, I can carry on the process and get the face that I want and the ornaments that I want or the border that I want without uh, having to buy it from somebody else. You know, if they're willing to get rid of it, that's the other problem. Most, most of the letterpress printers are very reluctant to get rid of anything because they know they're not going to find it anymore. You can't just buy it from ATF. <laughs> so. And so that, that this is, is great. this is the face of the time. It's not the whole piece of type because the type itself has to be made in the machine. And so the body itself is made on the mold of the machine, whereas this is only the face of that. So the machine has to have the right. mold for the rest of the piece right. to get so it to type high. If we look at this, this is the mat holder and it's got one of the mats in it. No, that's fine. Right. So that, yeah, there's the rest of the... So, so in here, you can see that this, you see the little square? So there's a body piece that slides right. in there, and it makes the body uh -huh. that the face is put onto. Right, 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 okay. And so this when is this just goes the in, end. Right. right. So, so when this is in, then this ejects a, a piece of type. And then a 
piece comes up like that and it closes. Now you can see where the body of the type is. Oh, wow. Okay. And then the face is put on the front of that hollow for the, the uh, cast, cast uh, piece. And then type metal is injected into the cavity. Yeah. Is it and it's injected to, to push it to, to yes. remove the bubbles? And yeah. So it just is injected in there. There's a pump that comes down and uh, pushes the, the metal in. And wow. Okay. So we can we can turn this on and cast some. I would love to see that. Oh, I can see it. I can see your flame down there. Yeah. I did do a little lost wax casting in uh -huh. the lines oh, no. back in the day. Uh -huh. right. So I'm, I'm, it's thrilling to see this part of it. Mm -hmm. It is interesting that we're you know, like, you're not using, you're not using um, gravity to, oh, right. to push it in. You're, you, you have to force oh, right. it tighter to get the bubbles out. Yeah. Well, we're, the idea here is that we want to. It's first of all making harder type, so we can use a little harder metal, and, and you need to inject it in to get rid of those. But right. also, we're making it much quicker. Right. And you know, if you, if you, you use wait. a hand mold, yeah. you go like this, and you got to open the thing out, take the type out, and then put it all back together and make another piece. Well, this is this will make them, you know, one That's, second. Yeah. Wow. So. Is this the kind of machine that they were saying a typecaster could cast 3,000 characters per day on? Is this, is this oh, at the heyday of those inland and central type boundaries. Well, yeah, but they weren't using, they were using either uh, Barth casters or Bruce casters, you know, so they were, it was a little different machine than this. But bigger, yeah. a slightly bigger scale. Yeah. Well, the Barth are huge. I mean, the Barth casters are very large material, um, machines with lots of bulk in it to, to use very high pressures. Right. And uh, But they were also one size each. So you had to have a barth for every size of type that you cast. Oh, Whereas nothing this one, to trade out. No, this is adjustable so I can cast all you know, 14, you kind of basically 14 to 36 point. It'll go a little higher and a little lower. Wow. But basically, those are the sizes that are generally available. Uh, it goes down, I've so got some that other 10 point. So you're telling me that really controls what kind of typefaces we can still find yeah. readily because it's what this machine can right. make. Right, so... That's why those 72 points are harder to find. Oh yeah. There's less yeah, this, the, the highest this goes is 48 point. So if, if you want 56 or... Higher, a different machine. Yeah, completely different. It's got to be a huge thing. There is one around that uh, uh, casts 120 point, and it's got hydraulics on the pumps to make to, it to make push sure. enough metal yeah. in fast yeah. enough. Yeah. Well, I didn't even think about that. I think you need more and more pressure mm -hmm. yeah. to so inject the. Yeah. So that's fascinating. Now, I was understanding that. Part of the problem with set type and why people were moving a lot of time is there was a lot of hand work in cleaning these, cheap, like cutting, cutting, like fixing them after they're cast. Well, that's for hand set, hand casting of type. Uh -huh. You have to break off the jets yourself, and uh -huh. but this machine does it all. I, oh, it does yes. break. Is this the jet? Yes. And the so it comes out like that, but the machine actually breaks those jets off and it cleans the foot. Ah. So, and yeah. then it's got, it's got, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's, there's knives in there that trim the oh. body. Uh -huh. So it's, you know, this is the knife here. Uh -huh. So it's, uh, and it's this, ready to go. Does this help the type setters, this oh, yeah. notch? Yeah, because when you're picking, when you pick something up, you don't have to look at it to know which direction is up. You uh -huh. set it with a notch up. So. Uh -huh. You know, and, and when you get really used to getting it out of the drawers, you have to kind of roll it with your fingers to find out what, First how you put notch, it in yeah. for the stick. Ah. So if it didn't have that, you'd have to look at every letter to say, is it up or down or something. Huh. So cool. it's important to have. Yeah. 
Yeah. So these basically you don't have a lot of cleaning to do afterwards. No. no They're ready nothing. to go. Yeah. Do you we have to look at them off. to check them? No. They're um, pretty much clean every time. Yeah, if, after after it gets going, you throw away the first few casts just because they're they could be cold or ah, or okay. there could be something in there. But after they get going, then they're fine. So you were talking about how uh, the larger Bruce Bark mm -hmm. casters is only one type face, and I noticed that you've got well, it's a only lot one of, size. Only one size, only one face. Right? No, just one size. We're just one size. You can change the face by changing the mat. Okay. All right. So the, the mat is whatever you have to put on it. But the size of the body. So the, the thing is, it's kind of like this. Is that you've got a body here of the type, which is going to tell you how wide it is and how tall it is. And, you know, the point size. But then the, the face that you put on it is dependent on the mat that you put in front of it. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, because you're getting these over Yeah, well that's because I cast this on a body that's too small. So oh, this so is this is like thirty six point but it should have been a forty eight point. So are you gonna go back and change oh, yeah. this body? No, I, I just wanted to see what it looks like. So that's why I cast it and I had it set up to thirty six points so I put it in there and it cast. But you can uh, you change it and then cast them the right size. I was noticing with Eric Woods, he had some tight faces, um, really tight faces like Art Gothic, mm -hmm. where there are overhangs like this that you mm -hmm. have to support mm -hmm. with furniture. Yeah, yeah, um, that happens. Uh, some of like the German faces and stuff, they have a lot of uh, overhangs on it. Yeah, that have to be supported because yeah. you kind of need them to be in the lighting. Yeah. In order for it to tighten that properly, yeah. yeah. That no, it's just too big, right. and, and it's got to be set, you know, to the right height. You, right. Gotta, you have a line, a baseline for your font, mm -hmm. and sometimes those letters are over that, or you know, especially in italics where they get the F's that are really well. You don't, you don't want that set so that uh, you have to space them too far apart from the fit. Right. So, well, one of the things that, that they do a lot with is uh, the ligatures. Um, you know, they made these special because they want it closely fit. So this is an F and an I. Uh -huh. And the, the reason those are together is that if you put a, a regular F and an I together, they're going to hit. It's too tight. Yeah. Right. Well, they won't come together. They won't come together because of the, the bases. Yeah. Okay. So what they did is they made some of these that have the two letters together so that they get good spacing. So the history of ligatures really comes from letterpress printing. Mm -hmm. It seems well, like. Yeah. It was I, mean, a I mean, for the, for these kind of things now, I mean, the, the scribes and stuff were drawing them. But okay. when, when you get when you get into letterpress printing, then you have to if you're going to have a tight set in your letters. If you have any kind of decent right. printing, you can have right. to make. Right. Otherwise, you get these funny spaces because you know, like a W is spread out at right. the top like this. Well, they have anything that that is close, or you have a very wide base on this. So F I T I. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of times, some of those letters are turned off. Them body so that you can get a tighter fit. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. This, this particular brand of machine, this is a monotype Thompson sorts caster. That means it casts individual letters one at a time. And it uses, I use uh, old type that I just collect and then melt down in the box. So you've got a pretty good concentration. You're not going to lose the, the percentages of the various metals that make up the amalgam. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cast somewhere between 650 and 700, 750. Some depends on what you're doing and how much uh, metal is needed to do the cast and what the 
concentration needs to be. But uh, right now it looks like it's about 680, 680 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the idea is that you have to have a set of matrices and you put each one of the matrices individual for each of the characters. That's all the uppercase, the lowercase, the points, and the figures uh, together on one at a time onto this mat holder. And it goes into this machine that creates the body mold that will accept the metal. Uh, so the, the idea is that the, the face is changeable. You, you have a body piece that is for the size of the type, uh, uh, like the point size. And then you, you're able to adjust the, the set width of the individual type pieces so that it will cover, you know, the letter will fit on the body of the piece. Uh, so this is a semi-automated machine that makes complete finished type that you can then use and uh, does all the uh, uh, cleaning and breaking the body, uh, breaking the, uh, the flange off the back and scores the feet so that you get uh, uh, a smooth piece of type at the end. So, uh, this is a little louder, so we'll, it is, it is on uh, electric motor, we use water to cool the mold so that the uh, body of the pipe is cooled quickly enough so that it can go in, get cast, cool down before it's ejected out of the side of the machine. Um, every once in a while this thing sprays metal. So if you hear a squirt, then just Why? stand back. It's, it's not usually uh, uh, too quick, you know, but you can step back and uh, get out of the way. So uh, the most dangerous place is here if this is not in place. So right in front, it's very good right in this particular position, but I work over here as well. Uh, some examples, you know, every once in a while something goes wrong and sports it out, but it's pretty rare. So uh, we'll just turn this off. Uh, Casting the individual type and it's just moving them out. Because it casts, so if you can kind of look over here, you can see where that, remember that little hole in the end? So that comes together, closes it up, injects the metal, and then you can see them coming out. And then all of the finishing of the metal happens here where the knives are when it pushes them through. Well, wow, they're still and, hot. Yeah. It's a little hot. It's not real hot. It's got that bit solid. Uh, and you can see this little uh, lever goes down and breaks the jet off. I see that. Yep. And it's warm enough that it's, it pops off a little easier when it's warm well, like that? It's, or is what's this just very cool. It's getting, oh. Yeah. yeah, it's just small enough that it breaks it off. What we can do is so there's a, a whole piece. 
the, the face, the body of the type, and the jet, they haven't been broke off, but you can see it's, it's hot, but it's not 700 degrees anymore. Cooled down very yeah. fast. Yeah. Well, that's why we got water. The water is spraying yeah. on so it. So the idea is that it's shrinking a little bit and comes out of the mold easier by cooling it off like that. finish tight and stack them up. You notice you have a counter on here. Yeah, just to give, give me an idea of where where we are, you know, because remember we have that scheme that tells us how many uh, pieces you need for individual parts. So if I'm making five of them and they need to be eight in you got a number. So this is the piston and the mechanism you carry in the, in the cans in here. Bert drop that piston which squirts the metal into the cavity. And uh, you know the cavity is filled with air before it um, does the gas piece. There's a lot of oil around the mold and it allows the air to escape. Yeah. And so that, what I'm seeing when it pulls back, it's the hot metal ready to come forward. Mm -hmm. How long do you need to work that to get it going? About 45 minutes. Is that hot metal? Goes to cold, uh, 700 degrees. This one is used, using propane, so our electric and uh, natural gas machine. Can you remind me when this was created, this machine? This was made about 1925. In that era. So this is a constant type caster made by Monica? Type machines. Yeah. yeah, so it the, it's it's no different. It has matrices that are the same idea as this. They just happen to be on a different plane they're because of the way design. they're yeah. So it's like a number of these in a yeah. row. Right. Set it up. just you just set them all in the long line and then it gets a single line. Does with a linotype machine are they printing a number of characters? Is it a specific number of characters? Well, the the line length. Is set. So, oh, so it, it may detect. So if how it's a newspaper, long. it's so many, it's so many pikas, and, it's, and you can say, okay, we're going to have this many characters for a twelve point type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can detect that. But the the matrices for the line type are a little different because the face of the letter is on the edge, not on the face. Oh. So, but they just stand up in long lines. Then you cast the whole line at one time. Right. Whereas this is individual letters, so you have to arrange them in the right order that you want. Right, right, so, right. And this is what they call hand set type. Right. Interesting. Really interesting. Hmm. So, right? Okay, so what else have you got in here? Yeah. Did you start as a did you start as a Take caster, or did you start as a letter press printer? Oh, uh, letter press printing. Yeah. yeah, I got started there. And the the thing was that uh, I got into that because I was I was doing books, and there was problems with the uh, correcting the proofs for the books, and I wanted to see why. So I went down to the print shop to figure out why this was happening. Uh, 
because uh, at that time they were still handset in type. And so if you wanted the line fixed, they would open it up. But if the letters got jumbled, they wouldn't necessarily know how to put it back together. And so it was all garbage. Oh. So that's that's how I got into this, is more interest of how it was running. And then my interest is how do these particular machines work. But the, the typecasting came because when you're going to print something, you don't want to have to count the number of Ys you've got. You just want to be able to, yeah, so you can just make more of anything that you're missing. Right. So then you can print whatever you want. So if I don't have enough of one font, I don't have to right. say, go to a different font. I can just make more. And so that was it. And it's hard to get them. I mean, you know, nowadays you can get used type, but... Not a whole set, necessarily. Yeah, sometimes it's missing something or the sometimes it's worn out. Yeah. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so it's very much nicer to print with brand new stuff. So. Yeah, wow. So this is a linotype, but it's a little special because this is the Model 15 uh -huh. linotype, which is very short. One of the things, it was, it was used a lot for uh, uh, weekly newspapers mm -hmm. in the territories. And it's also it was used on ships for wow. making their menus and stuff like that. Because huh. notice it's real short. Yeah. The most liner types are quite a bit larger. Right. Things. Right. So when you say it's short, does that mean it doesn't set as many letters? No, no. That's all. So it's all of that mechanism is exactly the same, mm -hmm. but the, the top of the machine is not as high. Uh -huh. So you can uh, change out the uh, magazines and, uh, and fix the machine without having to get on a ladder or something. You know, it's, yeah. it's just a very much shorter machine so that it would go through doors and you could put them on ships. And, uh, now this is a single magazine machine because it was used for things like uh, weekly newspapers where they didn't have a huge... Um, capacity that they had to go through. Whereas, like a newspaper in New York City, they would have huge, big machines with multiple magazines and so they could change out their, their characters and stuff on the fly. Where did your line of technician come from? Iowatha, Kansas. Oh. So it was used in an old uh, newspaper. Uh, newspaper out there. So. And this is now, these are Linotype mats. Ah. You can see the letters. No, that's a space. The letters on these are on the edges. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that so, they can be placed beside each other. Right. And so they get real close together, and then you just type on the keyboard which letter you want, mm -hmm. and it puts it into this line, and then the whole line is printed at once into a single. Uh, slug that you use to print with. So, so do, have, does this one work? Do you yeah. use it? Oh, yeah. Wow. That's cool. Do you have a Periodically. I mean, you got to have something to do with it because it's a right. lot of... Like it, a book. It it's a great yeah. thing yeah. to make a book with. So, um, do you have any slugs you made with this one around? So that's what Look at that! That is so cool! So you see that all the letters are there in place and it just creates an individual line. And then those Boy, are slipped together. Amazingly mm -hmm. fast typesetting mm -hmm. compared okay. to compared to what it was before. Wow, that is so cool. Um, and so we you know, at, at the in the 20s mm -hmm. in St. Louis, one of the reasons why Central and England closes mm -hmm. is because there's scarcity and they sell to ATF. Mm -hmm. um, that scarcity mm -hmm. is being created by Linotype, which replaces this kind of ease and, and time saving. Is that? Well, it was quite a bit faster. Right. I mean, you know, at the beginning, before Linotype, then Everybody was hand-setting type. 
right. and it took a very long time to handset all of the time necessary for a newspaper. And so when Linotype came in, then you could do it very much faster because right. uh, you, had, you could have several of them and several people doing different parts, and so it was very quick. And then as far as the type, I mean, they were still using type, and you still had to have big type for headlines and all that kind of right. stuff. So there was different kinds. A little of, bit of typesetting, but not yeah, really. Yeah, but not as much. as. And, and there was also another machine, the monotype, that created type in lines, right. not as uh, slugs, but individual pieces of type, but it put it together. Right. would cast the letter, individual letters and then line them up into a... So that you could just transfer. Right. And that was actually, linotype was pro primarily used in newspapers, whereas monotype was more for book houses that were creating books. Because right. it was a little nicer face. And than monotype. And stuff. But I could imagine this if, you know, if before it was taking hours to set mm -hmm. a page of type and you're getting, you were getting your articles from your mm -hmm. reporters at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. Those pressmen were truly working all night long, mm -hmm. hand set, yeah. Everything, yeah. and so maybe was, not making those deadlines. Right, and it was speeding things up and getting that done. But also, when you got finished, you had to break all that down and put all that all type this, back oh, into the All the sorts, whereas this just got melted down. Yep. So that was out, like hours and hours of yep. time. Yep. Say. And that might be as much as mm -hmm. the part where you get to melt it down and yep. not. Yep. Sorted. I have to redistribute the time. Yeah. Right. Because that took a lot of time and a lot of people. It took probably as much, almost as much time as setting it in the first mm -hmm. place, as putting it back in yeah. the case. Yeah. Wow. That makes a lot of and sense. And it had to be put back in the right place. Because <laughs> right. if it didn't, then that's where you got. The P, mind your P's and Q's, yeah. Yeah, because uh, people are setting type, they're not reading it. I mean, they do have proofreaders, but that's after the fact. And so then you not only had somebody who was setting it, but you had to have somebody to proofread it before it was printed so that you caught those odd letters that were put back in the wrong place. Which is exactly why it's called proofreading, isn't it? It's yeah. people getting letterpress proofs mm -hmm. and reading it before you run the run. Yeah, right. And doing it quickly mm -hmm. <laughs> right. you know, so that they could run the presses. Mm -hmm. Ah, interesting. That's interesting. Wow, that's so cool. Both. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just interested in the, the way things work, you know, how, because I mean, this is really a the machine. amazing machine, you know, yeah. look at that in the back all the years. Yeah. Did you, did you refurbish this one and mm -hmm. that one? Did you, you, you mm -hmm. made them all work again? Right. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it was more or less in good condition when I got it, but you have to clean it all up and yeah. adjust things. Make sure the parts are all working. And this is the guy who knows how to fix it if you don't yeah. know how to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> they come by and adjust them periodically. That's great. That's great. That's so cool. Eric Woods has a line of type. I didn't mm -hmm. think it's working yet. Mm -hmm. And it's a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's, that's amazing. Wow. And so these are. Those are more mats just haven't been put into the cabinet stuff. The maps are actually in these cabinets. This is for line of fact. This one is? Uh -huh. Why are they, um, why are they like that? Why are they angled like that? So that... You have to mini. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got... Which is a single list type mm -hmm. of Yeah, we can look at that list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundreds of faces. How many, yeah, how many faces do you cast here? Oh, just, I don't know, I have something like 3,000 faces. Wow. But, uh, That's amazing. That's yeah. a lot of different faces to cast. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you just, but you only cast what you need or what somebody else wants. So. Right. Um, right. If we look over here at this cabinet, mm -hmm. um, they're sloped so that the mats stay tight to each order. other. Yeah, not falling all over the place. So they just sloped yeah. a little bit, so it's they're pushed down instead of you know falling over. Ah, and so you can get them to mm -hmm. fit all the way to the end without a lot of yeah. work. Yeah. 
This is linotype, so there's a lot more because you you had to have enough characters or enough mats of every letter so that you could type out a line. Right. So if it's got lots of O's, you have to have enough O's to be able to set that line. Do you see that in early linotypes where they're using a cap T, where they need a lowercase T because they're out of T's, that kind of thing? No, not much. Because, I mean, this was set up so that you'd have enough. As many as you could possibly yeah. need. Yeah, I mean, remember those linotype slugs weren't that long, so it wasn't like you were going to use 20 teens, okay. you know, so you had enough. Well, and honestly, optimum line length for a 12-point type, which is probably what you're casting, mm -hmm. it's really not that long. Yeah, okay. yeah and, uh, it's interesting. But you also had, had it in three different stages, because there's one that's casting, and one that's waiting, and one that you're typing on. So it's not just small amounts. you got to have enough. You have to have basically three lines right. worth of characters. Right, and it's redistributing all the time. Cast, casting, the one that's been cast. Mm -hmm. Waiting, which would be the one that's cool. That you just did, no, no. The, the one that's waiting to be cast. Yes. And so so you type one and send it over. Uh -huh. And the machine says, okay, I'm going to cast this. And so it sends it over, puts it into the mold, and casts it. But while that's happening, you're typing away on the next one. Right. And so then you send that over, and so that one's cast, so the machine rotates and takes the next one in and casts that, while you're still typing and sending another one. So there's always, uh, the matrices are in different places in the machine right. as it's cast or waiting or being typed, and then just redistributing into the... So what, happens, so what happens if the typist makes a mistake on the line? If, well, if they know... Thing. Well, yeah, because... Or do they just retype the line and melt that? Well, they, that would be usually what happens with the, the type as it's as dropping. you type and dropping down here, it comes into this area. So if you know that you did that, you can open this up and take it out. And but, type the right character. Yeah. Well, yeah. you'd have to take a character and put it in there. So usually what they would do is they would just say, mistake and, you know, go on. So right. you wouldn't do that and take the slug or throw it away because the slugs come out into a line there you can also pull it out and put it this is where they come out yeah okay. and so you can if you knew it you can take that one out and do it again right so it's or take uh, the whole line out yeah 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 but the the problem is for this it's matrix sorting that becomes an issue yeah but that's done by the machine it automatically, yeah, once it's cast, well, Except for it goes in here, yeah. yeah, it goes in here and casts and the, and the individual slug comes out here and goes into a galley that's right, right here, okay, when that happens, this whole machine pivots and the matrix that was down in there comes around and gets picked up and brought up here and then they run and down And this thing runs around and sorts right. the letters back and then just drops them back down in here and then you can do them again so it's a, so it's a cycle. So you're telling me the linotype friction machine remembers your keystrokes long enough well, to be sorted? Well, the individual uh, characters have a key. key. Each letter yeah. is keyed right. and so it only drops where the key right. fits. Yep, and so it, you'll see it That's fascinating. back here. They come along this groove and just drop into the slot wherever they're supposed to be. Ah, and that's fascinating. Yeah. So you can see, it is like a, very much like a key that... Uh, I was looking at this, right I was looking mm -hmm. at this and wondering what this was about. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, that's fascinating. They, they follow along a little groove and then when they get to the right place just drop off and refill the matrix. I mean the magazine so that you can reuse it. Fascinating. So that's why you don't have to have a thousand O's. You just need to have you know, 20 O's. Mm -hmm. okay. Amazing, amazing. Oh, uh -huh. beautiful. And then the presses. This is uh, called an iron hand press. Uh -huh. And it's, uh, it makes big it's things. Very big. Like posters, and et cetera. And, uh, 
This is you have a huge press bed there. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really nice. What is the history of this machine? Um, well, this particular uh, machine was really used for doing proofing of uh, photographs, images, and uh, but they can be used in uh, uh, hand printing. Uh, it's, it's a massive bed, so you can get a lot of space on it and make, make something very large. This one is probably in the 1920s era and was used uh, probably in a bookshop to proof the individual illustrations that were going into books and stuff like that. And uh, it's mm. mechanism you have, have to pull this and this one lowers the platen down onto the type that's sitting on the bed. So you roll this in there and pull this lever. And so it's very slow and, and tedious, uh -huh. but uh, it's uh, interesting to print with. Yeah. And this is a, a golding jobber, uh -huh. um, 12 by 18. Uh -huh. um, That's a, yeah, you have a lot of large, mm -hmm. large format ones. Yeah. That's great. And uh, well electrified so that you can run this quickly. Uh -huh. It's a really nice big press. The nice thing about it is it's kind of upright. I don't know if you seen like a CMP. The CMP kind of opens like that. Right. You know, which is is nice, but this one is kind of turned around so that it's it's opening very um, small so that you have a very much smaller footprint. Right. So you know, this a CMP would take up you know, half the half the press so so and then uh, this is uh, Pearl. Uh -huh. 7 Eleven Pearl oh. by Golding as well. This is, I probably print more on this than any of the others. But, because it's, because it's you don't need the space. And yeah. yeah. And, uh, easy to clean up. Looks like it's easier to clean up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. A <laughs> little bit fast. Wow. And yeah, for the big ones, yeah, and mm -hmm. it could take you all day to set the type for it if it's 12, yeah, 12 to 36, mm -hmm. but it seems, it seems like you have some good wood, wood type as well. Do you have oh, a big yeah. wood type collection? Not, not huge. There's some, mm -hmm. uh, but it's... Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Hamilton drawers. Mm -hmm. So this Beautiful. is this thing I did a few years ago, oh. showing the type that I was casting at that time. Oh, so. oh, awesome. It's a really nice. So, so are you casting dresses for specific letterpress studios? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if People somebody wants them. something, yeah. The, uh, the biggest problem is, is that that's not a problem. The problem is when people come and say, I want one font of something, well, you know, it takes us long to do. Oh, you, they 20. want one letter. Well, they yeah. want one one whole font. See, this is much easier. If, if somebody comes and says, I want 10 fonts or 12 fonts of Caslin. Right. You know, it's, uh -huh. then you can do it. One, it takes you as long to do one as it takes you to do right. 10. You know. And honestly, what good does one copy? And yeah. when you say well, when you're saying font, yeah, you're using it to mean yeah, these are fonts. One copy of each letter. No, it's, it's it the the number of letters that are in a font is determined by how much are needed to do lines of of type. Of type. So so a font it, is multiple characters. Yeah, of and it's based. ATF had a scheme, uh -huh. and I, I just used theirs saying. There is going to be, if there's 14 A's, lowercase A's, then there's going to also be 14 lowercase N's and O's because there's certain letters that are used more frequently. More but for a 14 point or 14 uh, set of A's, there's going to be probably 
19 E's because it's the most frequently used. And so you have that ratio of all the letters and numbers and points and, and uh, the figures that go with it, ligatures and things like that, that, that just set up. And so you, you run it to a particular uh, scheme. Mm. And so that's a font. Mm. And uh, depending on the size and things like that, you know, 14 point, it would probably take uh, four to six fonts to fill a Californian case. If you get, uh, right. you know, 24 point, then it's three, mm -hmm. you know, and if it's 48, then it's two, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. You look at these like, this is 30 point Heinz mm -hmm. and you can see, you know, it's a, a lot less type right. than if you had something uh, if you had something you know, tiny. tiny, yeah. yeah. But, I can imagine old pressmen getting mm -hmm. tired of seven point type. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Smallest I have is four point. Yeah. I didn't yeah. cast it, I just found Whoa. it. So. <laughs> and you type set that all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> can we so, sort that? Yeah. Well, here's 18 point cast one. Mm -hmm. You know, it just yeah. depends. Now, yeah, the drawers are pretty empty and it's more if, than one. Part. Yeah, and if I'm going to um, do something mm -hmm. like a book, this isn't enough. You know, if right. you're going to do a book, you're going to have to have three or four cases of this. Right. You know, and you'd have to decide and. To I just want, do one page right. at a time and yeah. then resort it. Right. Yeah. Or yeah. have enough that you could do everything, but then you're going to have, have multiple cases full of it. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's starting to take up room in here. Yeah. But the nice thing about this is, you know, the fonts over there were a preset uh, set of letters that you could use to to do, you know, a nice little card or something, a broadside or something like that. But if you're going to do a book, then what you're going to come and say is, I don't want that. I want one font of uppercase and four fonts of lowercase, because right. that's going to be the, the balance yeah, you're going to need. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And so, but the nice thing about casting type is you can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to worry about buying the whole setup. Wow. You can get it to fit your needs. Hmm. Great. Fascinating. It's, it's, so crazy to have someone open a type of word mm -hmm. and it's all brand new mm -hmm. type. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just not used to seeing that. Yeah. It's fascinating. Well, it's really nice. And it prints much better than the old stuff. You know, you got to play with that old stuff all the time to, to make it. Oh, you get right. a nice even gray. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. Or some of them, are, the letters are rounded or this, that, right. and the other. You've lost your serifs. Yeah. So it's really, these, these print. With very little make ready. I mean, it just prints. And it's yep. really fun. Mm. But then, you know, students hammer it into the paper and. And then, <laughs> it's, and then it is ruined. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. And then I do a lot of these ding bats or borders or. I, I see, I'm excited about the borders. Mm -hmm. They're so fun. I bet everyone is really... Are people hungry for borders and decor decorative elements? Uh, some. Yeah. Know, but the people who are... This is... Small timer. I was, I was looking at uh, doing a small book of uh, oh, is that your four? Ornaments. Six point. <laughs> yeah. Get your six point. Uh -huh. Looking at doing a, booklet a little of booklet of ornaments that I've got. Oh. So I was casting a whole bunch so I, I can make a lot of them. <laughs> oh, I just love them. That's got to be so fun. Oh. You've got so many different ornaments, mm -hmm. too. I see. I think this was, I, I did that as a, a set for uh, people to make bridge oh, right. scorecards, but 
nobody wanted them. I guess nobody plays bridge anymore. Oh, with the clubs and the yeah, diamonds. Yeah. So I made just little sets. I was I was amazed <laughs> how many bridge sets there are on eBay. Mm. There are a mm. lot of bridge sets. Mm -hmm. I of course thought they were really interesting and wanted them, but um, but I was surprised to see that others did not. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. it's just no longer the fad, I guess. Mm. Ellen Ross, beautiful. Squares mm -hmm. and circles mm -hmm. is so appealing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> they'd just be really, with, they'd yeah. be really fun to mm -hmm. play with on the press. Mm -hmm. and just pattern with. Some of the stuff is two color too. Yeah. You know, like these are that yin and yang. Oh thing. right, like Foster and Webb, where you're mm -hmm. meant to run them one after the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've got. Uh, uh, one set of initials that I did not too long ago, they had, uh, I don't know, here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Oh, those are awesome. The biggest problem with those is that the register is so tight you can't bounce the card when you're, you know, you put it into the press. You know, so many times you, you put it down and kind of push it and it hits the gauge pin. Well, they'll bounce off, and then it's just a register off. So you got to place it in the right place, and then print. And then you can get Very the colors. Very careful. I am from. I did read. I did registration like this yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's wow. Tuscan floral. That's a really pretty. Wow. Victorian face. Beautiful. And I don't know, Lombardic, Lombardic initials and Gaudi text. Wow. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I'm not. You've got a lot of Heinzmann, and I'm wondering mm -hmm. is Heinzmann an early. Is it Because I know there yeah. were a lot of German. Yeah. Black I think runners. it was used here. They were probably selling it, but uh, I just get a lot of orders for Heinzmann, all different sizes. Really? And, yeah. It's That's weird. probably my best seller. Really? Well, it's just. There's a lot of people, especially in, in Mennonite communities and stuff, that use it. Huh. And so. I. So a lot of it. Wow. That's crazy. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Wow. And this, this is, is my OSHA approved paper cutter. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I have a OSHA not approved paper cutter that I can't use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can't, yeah. It's locked up because the kids can't use it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's funny. But OSHA doesn't know. No. <laughs> yeah, as long as they don't cut their fingers off, then you're fine. Yeah. Just when somebody yeah, does yeah. something stupid. Yeah, this is this makes you think about who you're <laughs> inviting in as an yeah. intern. Exactly. Type in St. Louis. I mean, how many people are casting type in the United States mm. right now? Well, there's probably two foundries, you know, business foundries and I would say uh, you know if you're not talking about people that are just doing it for themselves but people that you know will sell you their yeah, type maybe it's half a dozen you know because there are people around but to you know like Skyler you know he's got a big um, catalog of what he's got and he keeps uh, uh, inventory and all that stuff I'm not doing that right. you know, if somebody comes and they're waiting uh, they're willing to wait for a while yeah. you know six to eight weeks then maybe if I'm not doing something else but it's just not you know right I'm not a business you know I'm doing it for as a hobby so uh, you know if if there's a reason then fine or if, if I'm interested in doing you know I've got all the fonts over there, but getting them cast is a different problem, you know, because there's time. So if you come and say, well, I want freehand, you know, I want I want three or four fonts of freehand. I right. say, gee, I like that freehand too. I'll do that. But if you come and say, I want school, you know, century school book. It's not know, interesting yeah, enough to you. You'd have to. Because you'd have to. 
So you're saying if it's a typeface that's interesting enough to you, mm -hmm. you would be willing to make the matrices. Oh yeah. Well, that's that's Is a that whole other thing. Well, basically, if I have the matrices, I, if you come and say I want uh, Gaudi old style, mm -hmm. or you you want Garamond, mm -hmm. okay, and, and you're going to need three fonts or whatever, then okay, it may you be already worth have it. the matrices. Yeah. Right. And it's easy to do, and so it, you know it takes a couple of months, and you get it. That's right. fine. If you're talking about matrices, making matrices, that's a whole different issue because you're talking about another month or so that of you're going to have to yeah. make those. I was going to show you that. Basically, what it is is, is we've got this uh, this bath, and um, is that your elect? Are you electrifying? Yeah. Electro depositing. So it, it builds those. So here's a here's an example. So basically what you have is you gotta build this you, you take a blank and you drill holes into it and then you gotta put this piece of type in there. Do you solder it in? How do you No no you it? just set it in there and then you build this um, That's why you're calling platform. it building. Yeah. It's because it sits in it. there. Yeah. Okay, so so you get get that all set up so that it's, it forms the body uh -huh. around it, and then uh, you cover it up with tape, and then cover it in, in uh, uh, wax, and then you submerge this into the tank with electricity going through it, and so it builds up. And these it builds the, only the typeface part, and you can right. pop the rest of this off. Right. So the thing is that see the, this. Uh, mat itself was protected by this tape, so right. it didn't grow on that. It only grew in that hole. And so right. the idea is that it, once it gets finished growing, you get this off, you have to cut it off, and you take the type off on the other side, and then you have a new mat that you can cast from. The problem with this one is, see, it didn't work you know, around the edges there. Uh -huh. It's got to fill all that in. And so it covered the hole before it filled it in, the, so this oh. one won't work. So you go through all that process and it didn't work, it, and you got to do it again. And how long did it, this process take? Uh, you it takes it out and then you leave it in the bath for three or four days. Wow. And, and so you see, I mean, I've got a bath that will probably do a dozen or half a dozen uh, letters. letters at a time. And so if you're talking about 80 letters, you know, yes. plus you got to yes. get the type, you got to build the. And this, the of course, molds. takes this takes a while to set up. How long did it take to do this part? Four hours? Yeah, a piece. A piece? Yeah. I mean, gets, you're talking about yeah. 80, you really got yeah. to start factoring in weeks of time. Right. So you you got to really want to do it. you got to have the, the letters to do it with. And, right. You know, it's got to be something special. Yeah. And there are things, you know. Right. But most of the stuff that I've been doing with this is, is uh, uh, like those characters, dingbats and stuff, you know, something, you something know, so you do so a few so attractive. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Or can't get it anymore. And, you know. and you really want it, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's so. pretty fascinating. Yeah. All right. You, like you don't have any punches, do you? Uh, you're making, you're making matrices from type, which is kind of what we're yeah. forced to do now. Let's see, the other thing is that this, well, even these weren't, but, uh, see, these are, were, uh, oh, yeah. for, um, what's that one matrix for? That's for a barth caster. Oh. But see, so did you have a barth caster? No. Oh. But, see, now, these were punches. Uh-huh. So. That's a, that's a punch? No. This, this, these were punched. So, ah, these were not made the way that, no. these were punched with a. With a, with a, with a punch. With a steel. Yeah, steel punch. In they copper. Engraved. They engraved the the letter on that steel punch, and then they press it into here to form the face. Right. At a certain depth and everything like that. that and this was piece different. was this brass piece was cast. This is brass, right? Yeah, but it was it was cast just flat. Right. And then they use those punches to drive that punch down into here to create that letter. 
the copper the the brass isn't hot. It's smashed in there. You're right. You're really. Right. Mm -hmm. That's pretty yeah. strong. And it's a lot of pressure. Well, yeah, they've got a they've got presses that right press them both together. But that that was the way that they did it at the beginning. It was I mean, not mold making. It was it was well, it, it was it, not casting. Yes. It was to make these, right. they, they engraved a steel punch and they hardened it. And then this uh, copper is pretty... So this is copper, yeah. this is not... No, it's not brass, it's copper. But it's, it's pretty soft. Yeah. And so they're able to drive that steel punch down into here to make the individual mat. Right. And on mine, that took a lot of time and energy because uh, somebody had to do all that process. Well, what's happening on those flat mats that I have is that one of the things is the individual um, foundries were stealing each other's designs. Right. Right. And so they would buy a, a, a font, you know, like we were talking about, buy a font and electroplate matrices that they right. were able to then cast, you know, call it a different name and cast the same stuff. And so right. that that was the quick days and before easy. Copyright, yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's that's kind of that. So the history of stealing typeface goes way back. Oh, yeah, yeah, forever probably. <coughs> so. So this is punched into copper because copper was soft, soft. but copper easy. was, but copper was Stable. still mm -hmm. hard enough that you could cast lead, which is a lower melting point. Right. In a copper right, and they weren't going to melt in a copper you know. mat. Yeah, so you could do the same kind of thing, let's say, with uh, wood, but it's going to burn because of the temperature. Yeah. So you had to have all those things together to make everything kind of work out. It's interesting how different the process is, the routing process mm -hmm. is for wood type mm -hmm. versus. Mm -hmm. Right. Versus the casting process mm -hmm. that was native to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are two or three groups that are making wood type again. So. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, on CNC routers? Mm -hmm. The bigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, those, those people who. Those, those people who are making those original punches, they're. On, even oh, yeah. in the 1900s, they were rare as hen's mm -hmm. teeth. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it, was, it was a definite skill set that they had to have. I mean, it was jeweler's kind of skills. Well, I can only mm -hmm. imagine making a punch for a four point typeface. Oh, yeah. Just insanity mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just or, wanted to show their skills, you know. So. Yeah. Um, Amazing. Natural punches. Steel, steel cut mm -hmm. through an engraving process, yeah, no. process akin to engraving. Yeah, and it's it's uh, it's very um, you know, light steel, mm -hmm. and it's not hardened at all when they're engraving it. And then so it's not quite as crazy as I'm thinking it might no. be. I mean, it's, it's, it's a Still. good material and with, with proper files and, you know, they can, they can do it. Then they come back and harden it before they start punching, punching it into it. the... Copper. Yeah. Corner of this 
charge is to make sure there's 